Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 61st episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sam, and I play Cora Two Hearts. She's an Arun in the Geta Fenris. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle. He's 19, a Philodox, and has found his purpose with the Garo. He's known as Guards the Low, Child of Gaia. Hi, I'm Adam, and I play Mark Guides the Fallen, and he is a third of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm George. I play Roy Mindscape. He is a Ragabosh with the Stargazers. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, known as Speaks with Sweet Whispers. He is a Theurge of the Silent Striders. Last time, the Pax <clears throat> did various things to help families of the Peak, as well as trying to ease over tensions with the newly arrived fire starters and final days in how he runs his Karen. Mark is being taught by Malcolm, worm herder. And so you're learning a right it is a level two right mark. So you will need to do an intelligence rituals roll. The difficulty is 10 minus your intelligence. You need two successes to succeed this. You have two rolls to make a total of two successes. As you start to learn, the first weeks of tutelage is starting to click with you as you start to learn the spirits and things like that. You get to you get kind of a sense of them, the flowing, and the need to move forever, and the constant desire to push forward comes through to, with you during the dance. During this time, this week's time period, Kyle, you are asked by final days to come to his home he wishes to speak with you on some sept matters in private okay that sounds good as you arrive in his at his home he takes you over to his office and he has you sit down as he goes i'm glad you could make it uh water uh anything to drink oh of, of course um water please perfect as he grabs you some water and sits down i am very impressed with you in diffusing the situation with malcolm i just wanted to Thank you again for that. Of course. It's my pleasure to work for the Sept. And it might work out for the better now that the talk clock's ticking to try and get us to the Sept of the Five Mirrors. Hopefully before Malcolm performs his mission to the Sept of the Proud Warrior. Though, you goading him into that was a clever move. I don't think he'll succeed. You hope that he won't? No, well... I think we need alliances with other tribes before we try and pull in more of older brother into our sept. The Uctena... I've seen things of the Uctena in my travels that make me uncomfortable. Well, I... I can't say that in our travels we spent much time in any of their septs. They have a desire to learn. Many, even their Arun are very knowledgeable in spiritual matters. Unfortunately, this draws them to certain lore regarding the worm. And there's a genuine fear of mine that if the nation doesn't help them, that they will be the next White Howlers. What in their lore would lead them to that? Just as the White Howlers dived headfirst into the realm of the worm to fight, I fear that the Uctena dive head head first into scrolls of the worm that will corrupt them just as thoroughly as the Howlers, that the very presence of the Corruptor will eventually taint their souls and turn them into the monsters they wish to fight. I've seen them use rituals that hold Banes so that they can speak with them. Some have even, in Dark Fires, claimed to have learned certain gifts or rituals from Banes in the dark places. At least, that is what I have heard from others who have gained more of their trust than I. And so, what I would like is to try and strengthen our alliances with many sects, so that on the off chance that old, uh, the Uctena do collapse into corruption, we have backup to stop any kind of major damage. And with Malcolm being a Metis, that's likely to be seen as an insult, and one that we can play off as that 
he was so sure that they would accept him that we allowed him to go and that we meant no offense so that we can forge that bridge of our own accord at a future point. I had not considered that they would turn him back for being a Metis. I had hoped that his fame with the Firestarters would have superseded and that particular... Um, I personally, I hope that it does. I understand. And that is why I think we should speed up our timetables with the Sept of the Five Mirrors. I'm going to open a moon bridge to the Sept of the Winterfang as neutral ground to meet with their elder. A full, roughly week, maybe, two, or roughly two weeks before we'd planned to. They seemed open to this suggestion, so I will be doing that. And I understand your trepidation in this, but I wanted to tell you this. It's something that I try not to act on as Elder. I don't want to treat our cousins of the Uctena any differently than any other tribe. It's simply a precaution I wish to take, given the dark rumors that surround their tribe. Even their totem is closer to the worm, as you can see by its serpentine body. I hear your words, and they give me pause. I believe firmly that it was B's isolation from the rest of us that drove her fall. And if we don't unite with all of the tribes, including the Uctena and the Windigo, then I imagine they would be that much closer to falling. I don't disagree. I simply wanted the right safety measures. And I think you're right and that we should speed up those safety measures so that we can reach out sooner rather than later. Well, I... At the very least, I don't have any any concerns with meeting with the Five Mirrors earlier. Good. Um, is there any other information you wish to give me about Malcolm or anything that you see around the Sept? Information that may have escaped my eye so that I can lead more effectively. Well, despite the fact that Wormherder is a Metis, he is very well respected in the Sept. And I think it likely that your disagreements with him, your argument with him especially, reflects more poorly on you than it does of him, in the eyes of everyone else. Hmm. Thank you. Of course. And if I see or notice anything else, I will be sure to bring it to your attention. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It's, it's good to have candid feedback so that I may learn and cover up my own weaknesses especially since the Karen seems to be getting enemies from all sides recently. Given B's betrayal, that that mad mage that you all saw is still out there. And now that we know that there are leeches in our city who have an extensive list of our kinfolk that we don't know if it is mental or if it's actually written down, could put a fair number of our relatives at risk if someone were to discover it. And so I've been under enormous pressure lately to try and relieve those issues. I truly, I cannot even imagine a happy ending to the leech problem. Though I'm certain that you're more experienced in the matters, I do worry about it myself. What are your thoughts on the matter? What is your read on these leeches? I believe that if things continued as they have in the past, indefinitely, then I think where we are now is fine. But that's a tall order. Even if leeches are, well, relati relatively unchanging for a worm creature, it's only a matter of time before someone more powerful may step in, or everyone, anyone, can grow bored with the situation, especially given decades. Agreed. I'll reconfirm with Howling King then. He's very interested in this leech problem. I'm sure that hunting parties might happen soon, at least to discover their locations or at least what their contacts and connections are. You said that one has connections with the police, which is yes. troubling, given that we have kin in the police, and if he knows that, then he can hold that over their head as well. I think that we should assume that 
he has tendrils essentially everywhere within the city. Especially if his goal was to... I'm... These leech attacks on our kin are the first of their kind in this city. The amount of power it takes to ensure that no leeches are born here, to ensure that none of our kin are attacked, I imagine it's sprawling. It's true. That is a good point. We need to get a good head count on how many leeches there are, though. See how he's doing it. <sighs> if we only knew... We know so little about them. And their four tribes. Well, you know, it... It may help to speak to the Glasswalkers in Denver if they could get information from one of the leeches that they find. The fact that few leeches have have come here since the leech that did come here was from outside of the city and purposefully tried to antagonize, uh, uh, to start a war between the two factions here. Perhaps it's possible that leeches elsewhere know that Colorado Springs is not a, a safe place to hunt. And they might be able to shed more information on the leeches here. It's a good idea. I will take that into advisement then. <sighs> and how are you doing? How's Cora? I'm well, but she's certainly shaken. That get wanted a damnable high price for her rank of Adrian. Yes, I, uh, I, I can't fathom the things that she saw, though I'm. Sure, given enough time, I'll see them myself. Yes. As you grow in rank, you will see horrors. The worm, as Regender kind of just stares off, as if lost in memory. The worm is a terrible thing. Um, actually, on the subject of growing in rank, I believe I'm ready for my rank challenge. Alright. As his ears perk up, you have shown yourself to be growing as a mediator and that's something that will only serve you well especially if you are going to take my position as elder when i pass self-loathing is one of the greatest enemies to change that you need to learn forgiveness not just to others but for yourself being unforgiving and not letting go of hurt to others leads the worm to fester. It rots your heart and allows you to dehumanize those you set yourself against and perform atrocities in the name of justice, yet only feed the ever-growing cancer of this world. To refuse forgiveness for yourself and for your own actions can lead you down the path of Hirano. When the rage inverts and turns into sadness and despair, lost in an unending fight with the self to even move and to be consumed by hopelessness and loss. You have done your first step towards getting one to forgive others, and now you must take the next step and get them to forgive themselves which is a great, greater challenge and a greater task. Bloodwind has yet to forgive himself for the murder of his packmate who fell to the worm, or the fact that he didn't see it, or the fact that he let his packmate go to Pueblo alone. He hides it well from the rest, but you can see it, and you can see the festering in his soul on the other side of the gauntlet, the self-doubt, the self-hatred, that it's only a matter of time before the worm or Hirano claims him. And, Ga and either way, Gaia will lose another warrior. You must reach out to Bloodwind and get him to forgive himself of all of his wrongs. To let him unburden all of it to you and help him work through the complex emotions of self-hatred and self-doubt. Very well. I will spend as much time as I can with him in the following weeks before uh, we leave for the Sept of the Five. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, the Sept of the Winterfang. Good. Zeb, what are you doing for this week while Mark is kind of learning from Malcolm? Uh, I remember that there was kind of something that carried over from before, and it can wait, kind of knowing what Mark's doing with his own learning a ritual, and it was it was learning the right of, uh, the, right of the Fallen, right? Uh, 
but that can that can wait. It was first just finding out if there was a theogen in the sept that actually knew it. Um, okay. Otherwise, and and but that can that can wait. That can back burner. Um, he's no fool. So it was going to kind of go and see like like a morning, a couple days after this. You know, aside from researching that ritual in the background, um, probably linking up with Cora when she's just like having breakfast something alone at least where there aren't a bunch of ears around and i mean he try to pick a moment where it's like clearly not when it's right immediately after a couple days in going and sitting down to talk to her. all right it's been a couple days since cora's ordeal as you kind of approach her she's sitting up out alone deep in the woods all right uh i will go and uh yeah i'll approach her i'll i'll have like some coffee with me two hearts might i join you i have some uh coffee here yeah sure that's very welcome thank you we are not close but i believe we are friendly i will ask you something now as one that isn't i'm not beholden to your leadership or dependent on you nor am i a a judge of you as maybe others might be how are you really honestly i am shaken not in uh way that I it would shake my convictions and my hatred of the worm but I'm shaken in that there are so many more horrors that I suppose our low ranks protected us from and looking forward as we all grow I in my heart I know that we will face down whatever comes into our path but my brain just keeps telling me if these are the horrors that are, you know, just as an Adrian, how much worse does it get? Well, honored Adrian, I thought much about this also, about the nature of such a test and surely the rite of passage even for the hale and hearty of the warriors of Fenrir wouldn't dare expose young cubs or foss turned to such horrors. Part of me reflects that maybe the test isn't over quite yet. It's very easy for our brethren to stand around the fire and thump their chests, shouting wherever it dwells, whenever it breeds. Well, there it dwells and there it breeds. That's a shocking reality that I, a lowly foster, and wouldn't know. But I imagine that I think this test continues. And as you ask the exact right question, what are you shielding those young warriors from? And what are you preparing for? It's easy to risk our own life, but soon you might be ordering warriors into the darkness. Not that you haven't already. Knowing maybe they're on a suicide mission. Yours especially isn't a life that's going to end as an old, honored elder surrounded by family. It likely ends for most of us in battle, one way or another. And I think you all know, above all, there's no treating, there's no mercy. And I think we've come to expect that amongst the Fenrir of all else. We know you'll fight, you make the impossible possible. Not that you need any help with self-confidence amongst your tribe. But this is, I think, the real demand. I think this is when the facade of many would fall away. And lesser people would maybe realize the cause isn't worth pursuing but asking the question of victory too i think is correct i can only imagine how this how this came to be revealed but i am glad you have made it through i thank you and you're right i don't my life will not end in old age i won't let it (laughs) um but i am glad in a way that I made it through and that I was able to experience the horrors that were in there. Not because I enjoyed it at all. It was terrifying. It was horrific. It was enraging. But I'm glad because I know what to expect at least a little bit. I'm not looking strictly at minor veins and Mori and Things like that. I'm looking at real, true evil, and I I know a little bit of what to expect now. And it prepares me better for the battles ahead. I think there will be another 
challenge to consider. As you are an alpha, I am fortunately not. Consider, too, these exact horrors you've seen, cost, magnitude, the scale. These will be things mighty difficult to articulate and still in those that maybe have a little bit bravado versus experience. That might be a bit of a test of patience. Well, again, the warriors of Fenrir handle each other <laughs> own just fine. Others in particular might not begin to understand. I'll attempt to focus a pack mate of mine in his imitation and understanding his method acting perhaps to uh, alleviate one channel. I understand a certain pack mate of mine has uh, introduced his own challenges through his method acting and understanding. I will do my best as a favor to you, honored one, to maybe ensure that there's a little bit less, uh, less interference um, on his quest for enlightenment. Uh, I'll do my best to ensure that, uh, well, we focus appropriately. Now let's maybe think about more pleasant things and enjoy this coffee that has hopefully not gone cold as I've droned on. It's fine. Droning is a-okay. Um, and to be completely honest, your pack mate, as much as he enrages me, does make me stop and think, which is his job. Does Cora very, like, Tightly, I guess. <laughs> Though he could throw in a few jokes now and then. <laughs> so with that, Roy, during this week period, you were approached by gazes from afar. Mindscape. Gazes from afar. How are you doing? Good. How have you been? How are you adjusting to the new Karen? It's, it's taken some time. Um, definitely different from what I'm used to. But then again, I've been on the, the road for quite some time. I can understand that. This is a good Karen. Though Illusion and the Spider are just over that hill, there's much of chaos here. The wild breathes in this place. It's a good change of pace from the my previous set while I'm on duty here. I was wondering... Have you taken any thought on what you will be meditating on in a few weeks? I haven't taken much thought into it. I've had my mind full of other conflicting thoughts as of late. Mm. Then it'll be perfect. There is a lunar eclipse on July 16th, which means it's a stargazer holiday. It's when we go to a pool of water and meditate upon Luna as darkness envelops her. It allows us to let our minds travel to the umbra while our bodies stay behind. It's interesting. How I never there's... really thought that that could oh, that could work. Yes, it's something called the high umbra. It is a place where the spirits of concepts congregate, and so you could speak to the spiritual concept of the number two if you so chose, but. The holiday is a way for us to enter the astral umbra and search it out for places that are tied to our deepest thoughts and ideals so that we may explore ourselves there. You are physically weaker when you travel into the umbra this way, but it, allow it untethers you from the need to hunt ephemera and the need to come back after a lunar month to prevent your body from decaying into pure spirit. You are able to sustain this until the end of the lunar eclipse before you once again reawaken in your body. It is also possible to take an ally with you if you so choose to do this, if you wish to explore concepts together or strengthen bonds of brotherhood and fellowship. That's something I'm quite interested in, actually. I had a feeling. It'll be a good way to refine the five minds. I must say, I am quite ignorant on a lot of these topics. Uh, what are the five minds? Meditation, compassion, Kalido, instinct, enigmas. Each one is tied to one of the elements. Meditation is the earth mind. Compassion is the water mind. Kalido, the wind mind. Instinct is the fire mind. And enigmas is the moon mind. 
And I take it you must have a, a good balance between the five. If you ever wish to f- seek the true Gaia realm, yes. I don't know if that's something I want to do, but it would still be a good good path to take for now. The true De- Gaia realm isn't really a place so much as a state of being. Humanity calls it enlightenment. The stargazers have their own bodhisattvas who have seen glimpses of the Gaia Dhamma and have turned away to become teachers to help guide others on that path to rise above illusion. And who are these teachers? Do you happen to be one of them? I am not. I am a foster, though I plan to reach Adrian very soon. It's simply that I've been tied with our people in greater numbers than yourself. One is Clytal. She is the 996th incarnation of the first Stargazer, constantly reincarnating and returning to teach us. Some say Kai Lin, the creator of the actual martial arts style Kalido, was also one of our bodhisattvas, and that his incarnation still wanders around the Stargazers now learning and refining the art and teaching it as a humble teacher, never revealing himself so that unworthy students do not seek him out. So these teachers, you don't really find them, they find you. They find You find them when you place yourself on the correct path to run into them. Once you have aligned yourself with the proper ways, so to speak. Some will definitely seek you out, but let me put it another way. If you are on the road to knowledge and you truly do learn, you will find the mentors you seek. So this lunar eclipse holiday would be the best time for me to learn. So the High Umbra would give me the ability to truly learn and either about myself or things around me or thoughts, or the possibilities that can come later. Yes. You meditate, and you begin to follow a pathway set within you, as your mind draws you to your own convictions so that you may refine and either temper or discard ideas. Out of character, what day is it, or what's the date? We will say that it is, we'll say it's uh, July 2nd. So that's literally two weeks away. Yep. How do I prepare for this trip to the High Umbra? The first thing is, is to collect yourself. Spend some time reaffirming yourself with your instincts. Some of us meditate, others spend time disassociating from our human mind and attempt to live as a wolf. The, the whole point is, is to relax oneself and prepare oneself for meditation. Are there any rituals or are there any things that I need to prepare or bring with me? No, it will... Your refinement of your meditation will determine what you can bring. And so it'll be very much like stepping sideways. But instead, if you fail, you will reach the realm eventually, but you will have no body. You will only have a mind, you will only be able to see, you will not be able to interact. If some manner of success, you will be allowed your body, though your body will have the same, but nothing else. You will float naked through the upper umbra with no items and simply the silver cord tethering you back to your body. The better you step sideways, the more things you can draw in with you for comfort or utility. And if you fail spectacularly, you will be drawn into the nightmare realms, which I'm sure is not something you have any strong desire to do. Does anyone? (laughs) <laughs> no. I doubt even the spirals do. I would assume it's a nightmare for who, for the same, for the person who steps. So my nightmare 
would not be the same as, say, a Spiral's Nightmare. Correct. Your greatest personal fears will come alive. That is not something I wish to relive. I don't doubt it. Meditation, running with, running as a wolf. Do you think, no, it's whatever helps relax, right? Yes. Finding your thoughts, so to speak, and being left with only them. Do you happen to have any of the vision drug? I, I apologize, I forget the name. I only partook of it once. I did not. That was Terrence's purview. I, I tended not to use them for my meditation, and so I do not carry it upon me. Then would you happen to know where I can get some other drugs? You know, the party kind? I'm not... <laughs> I'm not part of Colorado Springs, so I would have to, you'd have to ask some of the locals. Well, you have given me much to think upon, and in doing so, I believe I need to take the next two weeks to prepare. Of course. Hopefully that helps. But I wanted to make sure you knew about it. You seemed troubled, and this is a good time to self-reflect. Well, I'm troubled not just on my own thoughts, but of what has been brought back to the Sept. Mm. Yes, the girl. I've heard the many horrors of Kun Kun, the centipede of darkness, but I've been focusing more on the spider these days. It is sometimes easy to forget how terrible pain and suffering can be and what its actions will do. I, too, have been focusing a lot on the the spider, but with current events, I have been pulled away and haven't been able to focus too much on it. Hmm. That's all right. Many, of, many tribes don't, and even members of our own tribe are too focused on the serpent. Uh, anyway, and so we'll go to Korra. You seek out Bloody Snow as she's doing some basics, as she's talking with the warder, seeing how she can help. Adrian? Bloody Snow, um, you have a moment. Yes, of course. Uh, I'll be right back. Thanks. Um, I wanted to thank you for my right of passage. Um, it was difficult, it was horrific, but it prepared me, to an extent at least. I'm not sure what comes next, but I learned a lot, and I just wanted to show my appreciation for that opportunity. Thanks. Uh, so I guess big thing is, um, well, you're going to have responsibilities I won't have. Okay. I'm a Metis. They won't follow me into war. I see. And I needed you to be ready. Because there might be a day, Korra, when you have to order Clea into a place like that. I understand. Um, that day, I'm sure will come too soon. But I'm glad that you took the lesson to heart. Definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, was your challenge anything like this one? Or... Mine was done to put me in my place. Mm. I was a fierce Arun. As you know, we don't have a strong presence in the Sept of the Green. It's primarily Bonars and the fight between them and the Shadow Lords for control of the Cairn. And, well... I went to Agatha for my rank challenge. I thought she would come up with something creative for me, and she did, unfortunately. <laughs> she, told me, she told me to go to the Sept of the Hidden Glade, which is a Fianna Karen. There were a few Metis there, and I had to stand in line with them, learning all of their lessons, while the Fianna talked about the curse of their birth, the taint in their blood, the fact that they aren't worth normal Garu, 
without frenzying and them being able to say the same to me for two whole days. I was also not allowed to sleep. And so my will was drained. And so I watched the young have their hopes crushed, their identities ground into powder, and their confidence crushed by a tribe that hates us because of the sins of our parents. And Agatha said that the lesson was required to temper my rage, lest I fail to see the apocalypse. Mm, I'm sure that was doubly difficult. It was. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. Well, I know that it doesn't count for much, probably. But you said that you were a f fierce Arun. I think that still holds, regardless. You better believe it. I would challenge you if you thought otherwise. <laughs> You're within a rank. You're within a rank of me, which means that it wouldn't be dishonorable for me to challenge you for that insult. No, no insults to you. <laughs> um, no, I would. I, I think that you are still a fierce Arun and a boon to our tribe, regardless of the, the circumstances of your birth. Thank you. I do appreciate that. And I think you'll do well for the tribe as well. That was not an easy challenge, but it was one that only an Adrian could perform. Or one worthy for it. <laughs> Did you think I was going to come back? I wouldn't have given it to you if I thought they'd drag you screaming and crying to the spiral. Oh, they wouldn't have dragged me screaming and crying. Death is always a possibility, but I had hoped that you'd succeed. Oh. Death is always a possibility, but I would not have been screaming or crying. <laughs> or laughs. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do some guardian duties here yes. for a bit until we move along. Yes. I heard Malcolm will be leaving soon, too. Will you be going with him? No, no. We, we meet up on occasion. We have our fun. We talk. We, sh swear, we share stories. We occasionally travel together but not this time this time we're mm -hmm. on separate paths can i get a uh, perception empathy yes you can Cora was gonna be like i think you should go more together i think that would be good for both of you <laughs> so you get the sense that she's kind of sad maybe maybe see if you can travel along with them next time sometime soon <laughs> i think that'd be good for both of you yeah maybe I don't know. We'll have to. I'll have to convince Heather. At that point, she's pretty all gun, gun ho about all of her missions. As you know, she's want to do Philodox and a Black Fury. <laughs> well, how about this then? Maybe ask him to come come visit you when he's done at Sept of the Five Mirrors. Oh, is that where he's at? Going? No, he's going to the Sept of the Proud Warrior. Ah, and he's done at Sept of the Proud Warrior. Like I said, might be good for both of you. I think you might be right. Just a suggestion. I think it would be good for you. It'd be nice. You said that three times. I know. As she looks at you with suspicion and then walks off. Coral will just smile and turn around and wave and bye. Time sort of continues on. Zeb, um, is there anything additional you want to do? Yep. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's kind of yeah, let's speak to another Theurge about about visions and uh, well about the right to if possible, but most definitely about about visions. Yes, about visions. Okay, there's several Thurges here that you could speak to. Each one who would bring their own sort of perspective. There's of course Fate mm -hmm. Dancer. Uh, I've, I've spoken to her before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is Andy Paints with Twilight, who is a Black Fury. There is Louis Earthwalker, who is a child of Gaia. Wahali I've with Earthwalker before. Yeah. Wahali Rivercaller, who is also of older brother. S Sage Star Touched, which is of the tribe older, older brother, and Alexis Iron River, who is of the Glasswalkers. Now, are, are most of these are most of these theaters elders, or I mean, I mean, they're certainly probably ranks above me. Um, uh, I know Earthwalker is, right? Or at least very, very senior. Uh, Earthwalker is rank three. Okay. 
Um, and I had spoken to him. We had discussed visions before. Mm-hmm. Um, I will. I will. Yeah, I will speak to him again. Okay. Earthwalker is wandering the park, doing some basics uh, in the physical world, cleaning up trash, things like that, keeping it healthy, and giving nourishment to the physical side of the gauntlet to aid the spirits on the other side. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll probably just do something similar, just like, like have like a satchel with me, just picking up trash um, and just kind of walk upon him along the path. Okay. Greetings, friend, as he picks up another can. We had spoken before, and I wonder if I might speak to you again about the the dreams and visions that we've had. I'd reflected much on your own. I was wondering if perhaps you've had more, if perhaps more had been revealed to you by Owl or others. No, nothing, nothing too prophetic, at least. I've had a few minor visions here and there of a great lumbering titan falling asleep next to the airport, but I haven't sussed out what that vision means yet. That is quite a vision. I will reflect on that, and I thank you for sharing. I would ask your other thoughts now, as as a warrior of the Fenrir has completed her challenge and spoken more about the worm and its depth. What do you... What did you reflect on when you heard those words? I thought much about the nature of the challenge and how for a warrior like that and how much, you know, what we depend on for them to do. Knowing the darkness was there, I can't comprehend it because my eyes didn't, well, my eye did not look upon it. But what do you think this, this is, is this merely a portent or just knowing an enemy is before us now? I think it's mostly knowing an enemy is before us now. I've seen many horrors of the worm, and I think her challenge was foolish, quite honestly. To walk into a hive alone to kill a single black spiral dancer is foolish and dangerous, given how few of us are left in the world. But it seems like a traditional bit of bravado that follows the get of Fenris like a cloud. It is difficult to look upon the endless churnings of the Corruptor, though, and not seek the comforts of frenzy and to claw away at all who stand before you. Even as a third, I feel that deeply. I have chosen at times not to tap the rage within us because I know it would burst forth in a font that I cannot control. I reflect on this much, and I hear your words, and I agree it is a difficult thing to fight. I attempted to counsel her as you and I had spoken before um, in a way neutral to allow her to process this. The same with others. I think I think this balance is more is more intense than I gathered for previously, but I continue to process this. I would ask you another mm, favor, or at least pointing me in the right direction for something that I think might help. I am ignorant of the right of the gathering of the departed. I believe there have been many friends lost amongst these guru now that I call friends, that perhaps in time this ritual would play out to be a great benefit. One, if you could instruct me or show me who may introduce it. And two, if you think this is a fool's errand and that time has passed and there are other ways to focus, I would happily hear your words and advice. No, I think it is a good one to learn, though be aware to the best of this that, you know, the rite is usually performed at the moment of the funeral. Though performing the rite to appease one's own soul is not unheard of. I I figured that time played a role. I looked to another, the most recent, uh, the fall 
of the cairn out east it affects my pack mate certainly it was another that while indirect and certainly not in time i realized this right not be might not be entirely applicable it seemed a route if you have a better one i too will hear it perhaps maybe more personal is to just continue to hear their words ritual is important in that in a sense greater than right our rights are ways to directly connect with the spirits the mother our aunt in the sky our brothers and sisters on a deeply spiritual level but ritual is more than that ritual is are the tasks and the traditions that allow us to see the passage of time and the passage of substance. The ritual of mourning someone who has passed and died or the ritual of great loss does not need to be associated and come with a Garu rite. It does not connect to the spiritual in a magical sense or a mystical sense. It connects to our souls in our sense of self that allows us to move on in the next phase of our lives. Perhaps you should create a ritual of your own, a new tradition, to mourn some sort of loss. The Rite of the Departed, though, is a good one, and it does certainly help with that, and being a member of this nation, it is undoubtable, or it's not, there's no doubt that you would find use for it. Julia Silverscribe has performed it for her own packmate. It is typically within the purview of Galliards, but a few thirds have learned it as well. Perhaps you could learn it from her. I thank you for that. Have you ever created a ritual of your own? This intrigues me, and I believe that this might serve as a starting point. Speaking with her, speaking with you. Would you guide me in such an endeavor, or would you know of someone else to also speak to? I, I realize that this is more than just rote instruction, that there's much more to it, but this is something entirely new to me that I have never heard of before. Me and my pack have had several run-ins with spirals up in Cripple Creek, and they've been rivals of ours for years. We have several battle scars from them, and actually our first battle scars came from that pack. And so, every year on the anniversary of those scars, we come together and we revel in the forest alone. We dance, we sing, we laugh, we drink, we hit trees, we fight each other, we hit the scars as if that will make them ache again. It is a reminder that we lived another year, and it is another year in which we can exact revenge upon them, and another year that we held this Karen against the spirals. It is a way to remind us of where we came from, where we are going, and what our purpose is. There is no mythical ritual that goes with it. It is simply a ritual we perform to reconfirm our bonds of love. This would inspire hope in the wake of mourning. I thank you for your time and your wisdom on this. And I believe I will have much work to do. Thank you. And of course. And I'll just tool around with him for a little while longer on the path, picking stuff up and, and tending to things in a, okay. a normal way, Keegan. Sounds good. Mark, you're at the river again as Malcolm is once again instructing you as he goes. So you see, you feel it like this, and you put your hands in the water. Remember, the dance is important. Right, right. It's as if we're simulating the water itself. Exactly. You become one with it. The river is more than one spirit, but they're all connected, as we all are, to the spirit world, to the wolf, to man, and finding that balance in the river allows you to feel out, feel anything dark or unnatural that crosses the bounds of that river or that seeks to taint that river from outside of its purview. You can sense corruption in the snow as it leaks into the river. You can sense it in the groundwater if it tries to bubble up and fester within the river. You can sense it, or the river can sense it, if something corrupted crosses the river. And if you get your spirit companions right and your network of spirits correct, 
you can get the river to talk to tell those spirits, and you have an early warning system. Hmm. It is ah, a simple ritual. I see. And all it does is make the spirit more aware. But if you are devoted to the spirits and you give them due reverence, then the spirits will tell you. I see. It's it's a spiritual communication. Exactly. I see, I see. All right, let's try it again. You ready? Ready. As he kind of laughs and he just pushes you over. Don't fuck up this time. <laughs> I'll laugh too and I'll just splash some water on him. <laughs> As he laughs and he grabs your arm and he pulls you out of the river. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. As you continue on, Kyle, you find Bloodwind alone. He is in lupus form. He hasn't really been seen too much in the Karen these days. Uh, first, I have three questions sure. out of character. What was Blood- Bloodwind's packmate's name? It was Iron Howl. Iron Howl, yes. Um, and then, this is just a reminder, persuasion isn't obvious, right? No, it's not obvious. Okay, wonderful. And then, what rank is Bloodwind? He is Adrian right now. Okay, perfect, thank you. I will, Kyle will bow his head slightly and say, Bloodwind, Rhea, do you think we could spend some time speaking? The wolf's head slowly lifts over and looks at you. It seems to be contemplating. Can I get a perception empathy? Absolutely. The fire in his eyes is out. It flick flickers up for a moment. The old angers, the old passions. But they've been on the decline for months. The wolf takes a deep breath and makes a barely noticeable motion for you to sit to speak as its head plops back down into the pine needles and twigs. He takes a deep breath as you notice the insects crawling over his legs, the few mice that dart in front of him, fearing for the jaws, though his interest seems elsewhere. If you were willing, I wanted to speak about Iron Howl. He looks up, the anger kind of flashes in his eyes again. Before his fall, I wanted to know more about who he was, not just as a Garu, but as your friend and family. Are you a Galliard now? Plan to sing him a song, praising him before his corruption? I would not dishonor someone's memory with my singing. The ape makes jokes. I'm not a good storyteller. I assure you, without joking, I believe firmly that that should be left in the hands of the Galliard, and not me. Then why bother listening about him? He is dead. You have done your duty, and you have defended the litany. I would listen for a different reason entirely. For a more selfish one. Selfish? Yes. I would hear of him not to honor his memory, though certainly I believe that to be right to do, but just to hear you speak of him. He was an odd ape. One who had connections to a sept without a Karen, a thing unheard of, a place with no wolves. He ran with his dog tribe. He believed it was his responsibility to keep tabs on them so that they could aid us. I always said he was foolish for it. They defend those who burn away at the mother, and I never understood why. He always preferred it here, and I always snapped at him when he decided to leave. He saw the snapping of my jaws. It was the last thing he saw before his fall, and the last thing after. I can understand that. The last thing that B saw of me before her fall was me cursing her for going with them. Though, looking back now, we likely all would have died if she hadn't. You apes use so many words. The forelegs have very few wor- uses for them. But now I find myself at a loss. Tell me, do you have words to describe what I feel? The feeling of when one's hope dies, is resurrected, 
and then burned away with one's own claws. The sadness of when a packmate disappears and they are thought dead only to see them return at the fire. As you whisper that it's all right, that, that, that you will protect them again, that the pain they endured, the scars, would be mended, only to find out the scars hid something else, something you were blind to, because you hoped to care for them and love them as a brother, as a pack. Are there words like that in the Hamid tongue? There are words for parts and parcels, but there is no one word, because no one word could do it justice. Agony is a good word to start. Then I am in agony, Kyle guards the low. I have been in agony, and I am tired. Uh, so I'm going to activate persuasion now. Okay. I roll charisma subterfuge. Okay, so your difficulties are reduced by one, so all of your persuasion rolls will be at difficulty eight. Wonderful. If you don't mind, I'm going to speak some of Bee's fall. Speak. Our failures when... can crash together in a cacophony of sorrow. When she fell, I learned two lessons. The first was a hard and terrible lesson. That her fall was primarily my fault. I kept her at a distance, admonished her for her failures, but I didn't guide her. I showed her rage, but not the love that a packmate should. I didn't show her what was wrong, what could help. I was so sure of the Garu way that I felt she should find it on her own, even though I had just stumbled into it and found it good, and that that, more than anything else, drove her from us. But the second lesson came later, and that was that the rage I had harbored, not the rage towards the fallen bee, but towards myself, did not help me, did not help the Garu. It hurt us both. When I saw myself or my failures in others, all I would have to offer them would be the rage that I had held within. If my pack or the packs that we run with mirrored my same failures, I know I couldn't have helped. My words would have been tainted with agony. But in time, I learned that I, I could take that lesson, the first lesson. I can understand the hand that I had in her fall, but let go of the self-hatred and the, the taint and help prevent my own walk towards the spiral. But more than anything, it meant that I'm here and able to help the other Garu that remain. My pack, this sept, even the pack we brought with us. That's fine. I didn't push Iron Howl to the worm. It was my inaction. I did not die next to him. It was my hope that blinded me to the rot in his heart. And now, it's the, as you say, agony that festers down to my very bones, that makes me angry and unable to think. How does one continue forward after ripping out his brother's throat? How does one protect his new sister when he has failed one so badly before. How does one go on when his brother's good deeds are erased from the lips of all around him and his name is whispered with contempt for the fall your inaction had a hand in? There is nothing that you can do to change the past but there is everything that you can do to help your new packmate and the others who remain who i promise feel the same way that you do there is everything that can still be done so many garu that could be saved who then in turn could save others you are a great warrior of the garu who has failed i am a warrior of the garu who has failed not in the same ways, no, but with the same end result. Alright, could you roll 
Charisma Expressions, difficulty eight, please. You will need, this is going to be an extended roll. You have, each roll will represent about two days worth of kind of these back and forths. You have three chances, or I'm sorry, you will have five chances to get 10 successes total. Oh, fuck. You can do things in the conversation to add to your die pool, though, which you have done here. So the role play is important to increase your die pool possibility. For the arguments presented, you will get two bonus dice. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right. Roll. Yeah. That's a good start. <laughs> that is a good start. <laughs> Five successes as Bloodwind listens to you as you keep talking. And... He- some light returns to his eyes and he looks at you thoughtfully for a moment and then goes Kyle guards the low I'm very tired but please sit and be tired with me I would be honored as you sit and the stars come out and he watches them the sadness still upon him like a shroud, but at least it looks as if there's some chance of it coming off. As kind of time continues on, uh, a couple days pass. What is everyone doing while Kyle's doing this discussion stuff? And we're getting close to Mark's second role for his two week right learning. Uh, Mark would have wanted to introduce uh, Winds of the Mountain to Malcolm with okay. the topic of creating that spiritual network with this rite that the wind could possibly communicate with the water and so on and so forth. Okay. You kind of do that. Uh, you, you start making those connections and Malcolm shows you how to do the proper... Um, deals and things like that with the spirit so that the spirit comes to you willingly how it is more than just gnosis it is trying to once again understand and embody that spirit mm-hmm. okay how about cora um well if it's just a couple of days then i want to find a third to talk to um about this necklace and see what's going on with it and then um probably start learning a new uh gift though i have a list i need okay. to pick one or two from <laughs> okay pick a pick a third i was thinking of talking to earthwalker because okay. i've I, I know him we've had sure. contact we've we're kind of friends sure Ish. earthwalker is in the umbra dealing with some spirits this time it seems like he's doing similar to what he was doing with zeb but now he is dealing with the spirits giving them honors things like that awesome mm. Walker, do you mind if I interrupt you for a moment? Well, I seem to be quite popular these days. <laughs> well, if you've got a minute, um, I actually have a question. So, I I received this this necklace from um, my contact, a friend. Not sure what to call her, um, but Edwin uh, said that it inside, and I don't. And that she was told that it would be helpful for me, and I'm not sure what's going on with it. I was wondering if you could help me out. Uh, maybe. It'll take a few days, probably, to identify it. Um, I have to make contact with the spirit, attempt to, you know, connect with it via attuning to this necklace in some way. Mm. Well, do you? would it be best for me to just attune to it and figure it out that way or Mm, not necessarily that will give you a quick connection to the spirit but that might get you into the range of the spirit's brood not necessarily the specific type of spirit Mm. yeah so i mean if you would be willing to help with this i i don't know spirity things i can't do it (laughs) well i will take a look at it i'll come back and see me in a couple days. Thank you. Appreciate that. And next, Roy? Um, I was actually thinking about talking to Zeb and asking him to come out and possibly party. Okay. You know, blow off some steam. 
and maybe talk to him about the uh, lunar eclipse that's coming up. All right, sounds good. Zeb, is that cool with you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, so you guys kind of meet up. Hey, Zeb, how you doing? I'm doing all right, buddy. How are you? I've been better. Um, this is why I w wanted to talk to you, actually. I was wanting to get out of here and spend some time away from this place. Just relax. Get my head back into... I don't even know what to call it anymore. Just better. Well, I'm happy to go out with you anywhere you'd like, but what's got you troubled? Just a lot of things. What we spoke about, I spoke to Owl. I spoke with Gazes from afar, and there's a lot going on. What Cora brought back. I just need to realign myself, and to do so, I just thought I'd get out of here and relax. It's a lot to think about. I understand. You can only dwell on so many things all at once. I might find it best to think of nothing. Sometimes thinking about nothing is the best way to come to the, the conclusion or the path you need. Lead the way, Roy. Um, let's go to a bar and start, just start drinking. All right, you guys go to the bar, you start drinking, it's... So, Zeb, have you ever thought about the future as far as where you might be or what your plans are? I think my plan's pretty fixed, Roy, but I suppose I think about the future often enough, knowing that there'll be one more journey to take, one more place to go, and hopefully one day I'll wander out there somewhere and just not come back. I take it this is something that's been crossing your mind quite a bit. Yes, I don't really know what my purpose is besides to question and to think. That's a pretty yeah. good purpose to have though, Roar. There's a lot more, there's a lot of people that could use a whole lot of thinking and a whole lot of questions. Questioning is good. Thinking is good. But who who is there to question me? I'm, I'm, from my understanding and from talking to everybody, I'm here to put others in their place, not in a negative way, but to humble people. And I don't know who's there to guide me, guide my hand. You've had a lot of folks come your way that gave you just exactly what you should do uh, through their own lens of what they think you're supposed to do. So I see the challenge there where you have to determine how your role plays out with those you interact with. I think you started to a degree in trying to think like other people, but rather than imitate, you can just empathize with them. I can't advise you either because I depend on you too to question the things I might do and introduce things that I would never think about normally. You've had solutions to things that while different, were acceptable in the time and place to make sure, for instance, I wasn't killed. This is a good thing to reflect on. I'm curious, what did Owl's words speak to? Those are words that I weigh heavily above all others, above anyone else that would dare to tell me what I should do. Exactly that is to question. Have you found yourself struggling with the questions that you should ask? That would probably be the nail on the head, actually. I couldn't quite find the, the question to even ask myself. Consider something we've done recently, and that was going out there to try to help the, the volunteers in this town. And that could have easily turned into just a murder spree of corrupt policemen and others until through bloodshed alone we found the goal that we wanted, an outcome that we thought was best because that's what the people needed. The question therein, and fortunately wisdom prevailed, the question would be what on earth would a murder spree result in? What would be the goal to just kill all the time? Now, the equal question too is, why would we spare so-and-so? Is the corruption too deep? Has it gone too far? Why is this the only action you've left yourself with? And, and an even better question for, for a decision maker, for an alpha, why have you painted yourself into this corner? 
Why do you not consider something else? And sometimes the manner in which you ask that question is just as important as the question itself. So you're not antagonizing them all the time because an antagonist is, is troublesome and wearisome and, and a burden. But instead, you merely say, why do you limit yourself? And that is a heck of a question to ask a whole lot of people dominated by fear and remorse and doubt. I'll take a, another drink. And since when, when have you become such a ragabosh in nature? I have looked to counsel people with wisdom that I myself either have failed to follow or cannot necessarily mm, enforce, maintain, guide. So I don't believe that I am anything other than a counselor for you here and now. Those are questions that I would ask myself, but to hear them asked by an outsider, by you who would demand an answer where I might ignore myself is very important your will acting upon someone else to demand an answer to an uncomfortable question. Questions that would be look in the mirror and you say, who am I and what's the point? That's a hell of a question to ask, to dodge repeatedly, for you to ask someone about their essence, about what they are doing, about what their goal is. That is important. I would value you for asking me those questions, but I understand too, here you are looking at yourself now wondering who you are and what are you about to do i am but one person again whispering in your ear but perhaps this would help if i am only echoing words you've already heard if i am countermanding them that is certainly not helpful but again you are yourself roy this is a very fortunate thing for you to be able to decide exactly what your role is and dictate it yourself then let me ask you this would you go on a journey of sorts with me through the Umbra. Gazes from afar has given me some information. Uh, I did not know of the holiday that's coming up. July 16th actually is what is a lunar eclipse. It's the closest that we can get to the Umbra from the physical plane and we can travel to the High Umbra. It's a place where we can look for further answers and I can take a friend with me for either assistance, guidance, or just companionship. Would that be something that you would do with me? It would make me most glad to go with you, Roy, I am glad to hear you look to the nature of the wild and the guru as you have taken in that of the weaver and others. Here now is a viewpoint that is your own, that is your own to impose and control. I am honored as your friend and packmate to go. I am eager to go to see this, and this is something I find very exciting. All right, and with that, Kyle, you're back to Bloodwind, who has stretched a bit and you see him gnawing down on a rabbit, crunching down the bones, flesh and fur. Out of character, is this two days later then? Yes. Um, and then, what is Bloodwind's new packmate's name? I know we've met her and spoken with her, but... It's Andy Paints with Twilight. How are you today, Bloodwind? Hungry. May I sit with you again? Sit. As he continues to gnaw. I have thought more but we spoke about what we spoke of a few days ago oh what have you thought of i think that in some ways the garu are wrong about one thing well maybe many things but one thing that i know of and i think that those we lose not just to death but also to the worm do deserve to be remembered as they were hmm some tribes do. I know that occasionally Fiona lament white howlers, but I know many, like the Get, we do not lament them, for we know what they are now. It is difficult to think about the time before now and see what good they do, but Iron Howl was somehow different. Easier, then? To remember the before 
much easier. I think that that is the the blessing and the curse hmm. of being in the same pack. But I would say it is likely our duty to remember them as they were before. Hmm. And, of course, as they became. One, so that we feel deeply what it is like to become that, to watch it happen, to feel that pain when others go through it, but to also prevent it in those that remain that we love. Perhaps to cast away those who fall to the worm is a tradition ancient with our people, because to whisper the name of the worm is to invite it to come find you. I know why they strike his name, but it still hurts to think that something can remove all the good from someone, from someone else's, from our memories, is confusing. Or that people at least treat it as such. Nothing can truly remove the good that Iron Howl did. The good that any Wormfallen does. We can pretend to forget it, but it is always there. And as I mentioned before, I think it is our duty as packmates to carry the memory of that good with us. Hmm. Perhaps you are right. So, make another roll. Diff eight. Uh, one, one die for this one. One extra butt die, I should say. Oh yeah, I mean one die would be sad, but. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've got seven. You need three more. You have a few more chances. Uh, we're going to have you just roll those now uh, with the same number of dice just to see the successes. So you've got seven, nine, ten. <laughs> exactly. I would prefer not to roll the fifth one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just That's in fair. case. <laughs> That's fair. Your talks go back and forth as Bloodwind kind of lays before you his hurts and his pains, though he seems more comfortable as he does leave his little hollow here in the deep woods and goes back and starts speaking with his packmates again. He may not have fully forgiven himself, but he is certainly in no danger of falling into Harano anytime soon. And so... Uh, big exaggerated sigh of yeah. relief. <laughs> as you approach Regender final days guards the love I have been speaking with Bloodwind and I believe tentatively that I am successful he has rejoined his pack and is speaking with people again alright I will see and I will judge for myself please wait wait inside you wait inside Regender's house for a couple hours before he returns he sits down his face grave and solemn you have succeeded Congratulations, Adrian. Thank you very much, Final Days. It's good timing, too. We'll be leaving in a couple of days. Uh, you you all don't have to come with us. This is just a meeting of the elders. You'll be coming when we've set up our deals and we will send packs out for pathstones. Very well. Um, though I am likely available. Of course. Would you like me to come? Of course. Once we've come up to the deals, it's best that we don't want to look aggressive, and so we've sent, decided to send both elders, and we will simply talk it out between ourselves. Well, then, I'm eager oh. to hear how it goes. Yes, and then we will gather packs. They will meet. The packs will paint ru ancient runes upon them, and they will enter the Umbra and go far and wide to seek the path stones. Once the path stones have been found, you will meet your sister seeking packs, trade the stones, and then we will perform the Rite of the Moon Bridge at the exact same time on the exact same moon. And if we are successful, the Moon Bridge will open, and there will be a revelry. I look forward to it. I haven't been uh, in the Sept, in any Sept, when they formed a Moon Bridge with another. It is a beautiful thing. You will see the actual spirits come alive as loons, strike the umbral sky and a great beam of light solidifies into a path. Well, I I certainly look forward to it. Me as well. 
All right, and then Mark, I will need another roll as you are with Malcolm learning his right. You just need one success on this. All righty. Intelligence ritual is difficulty 10 minus your intelligence. Ha ha! You successfully learn the right from Malcolm. Woo! As you finish the dance with Malcolm, as you feel, as you touch the great spirit and you see the illumination of moonlight shimmer all the way up as it snakes through the forest and you sense for just a brief moment that it reaches the peak tops where the snow melts into new rivers and gives it life, the rains that feed it, the heat that pulls from it. You feel it all for just a brief second and then you let go and the spirit seems renewed and you have learned the right, the mystical right known as right of the river's grace. It uses the standard mythical right uh, rolls that can be found in the core book. Awesome. Heck yeah. I have four rights under my belt now. Woo. I'll turn to Malcolm and I'll kind of smile at him and shake my head and go, Thank you, Worm Herder. I. I. That, I don't know what else to say. No need to say anything. Just do right by the spirits. As always, thank, brother. Thank you for coming to learn this. Of course. As a Thurge, and as a Children of Gaia, it's my duty to make sure the Septs are maintained. And with this, I will make sure this Sept is maintained. Thank and you. So, and so, a few days pass. You're all kind of just hanging about in the Septs, doing your own things, uh, kind of relaxing, finally getting a, a little moment to breathe for a few days, so to speak. As you collect yourself as Regender, nods to all of you and prepares for his trip to the Sept of the Winterfang. You hear, after just a few moments, as the Moon Bridge presumably was supposed to open, a massive crash. Kyle, you feel something in your pocket shaking as everything feels wrong and you notice that the sun has kind of a strange tint even here in the physical realm. I will immediately check my pocket. You pull out your worm fang and it is black. Uh, Krynos, and yell something has gone terribly wrong. As you hear in the distance the... I take it we all hear that, yes. so I'm switching to Krynos. Yeah, definitely. Bit of an understatement. Yeah, same. I will too. You start rushing to the heart of the Karen as you see that the path stone has turned black and ripped open. There is a tear in the gauntlet as you see into the spiritual world with Regender knocked back as you see a massive incarnate of stag its body covered in festering sores its stomach rended open as its entrails hit the ground and turn into legs supporting it by th with six long monstrous legs putrefied flesh leaking down and turning into tendrils one eye socket melted away revealing a crimson light and a ripping pattern leading down the entirety of the side of its face and down its throat, opening up into a massive maw with needles and daggers in every which direction, with roping tongues swirling out in various directions from its gaping maw, each one capped with a fleshy protuberance that resembles a human face writhing in agony and screaming. You see Malcolm there, and Malcolm seems to notice something as the thing, as the spirit speaks out as you hear it going. I feel my brother in the soil. As it keeps speaking, and it seems to be growing in strength. Give me strength, brother. Give me strength so I can feed. And out of the same kind of flesh that you have on the inside of your cheeks, a pair of hands rip out from the side of its massive maw with broken bones forming jagged claws as it turns and its eyes, or what you can at least 
Think our eyes dart in all directions as they open up along the sores, weeping pus that hits the earth and corrupts the very grass as new, bane-like creatures scream out of the earth itself. Uh, oh, shit. Malcolm is uh, going to a uh, brief look at the ground, back at the uh, stones of the sept, then back towards this uh, stag creature. Go. Shit! Older brothers, lend me your power! As you see a bunch of the Uctena shifting to Krinos and rending their own flesh as blood seems to leak from them, and in their blood droplets you see the glistens of Gnosis and their own blood as they also seem to be burning through something else within their very souls as it starts to collect in Malcolm's hand. I'm Malcolm's going to clasp both hands together towards the stag and use the rite of Bane binding. All right, the... the... Right takes a bit of time as you start to weave and you start the dance with your fellows. As Malcolm seems to be preparing and he yells at you all. Keep the bane busy. Initiatives, please. Guess not. Guess I'm not fucking trying. <laughs> to be I fair. I almost went before you. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that. I'm just going to keep that initiative. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, and did Zeb roll? Yes, he did. Cool. All right, so let us begin. So the Bane this round is going to activate its power Blighted Touch for the next person it hits. It is going to, it gets two automatic actions no matter what without having to spend rage. And so it is going to attack Korra and dodge, and then it's going to spend two points of rage, one to attack Zeb, and one to attack Kyle as well. And then on top of that, actually, it'll spend one more point of rage, and it is going to activate the power Create Wind, and it is going to summon a hurricane, or a tornado. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Zeb, what are you doing this round? I'm going to summon an Earth Spirit, Keegan, and I will spend a willpower farm at next success. Okay, so we will do the Rite of Summoning then? Uh, Mark? I am going to spend a Gnosis and use Unicorn's Arsenal. Okay. Kyle? I am going to activate Parabellum. Okay. And I will spend then another Rage to dodge and also uh, attack. All right. And Roy? With Claws. I'm going to spend a Gnosis to activate my uh, Snake Rope. Okay. And Cora. I am going to... I'm going to bite okay. and claw claw, so I'm going to spend two rage to do that. Alright. Bite, claw, claw. This is for the bite. Alright, so you got two rollover. Yeah. As you, your claws rake in, as you feel the pus upon your hands, can I roll, could you roll stamina for me, please? Difficulty, eight. Uh, yeah. Stamina is seven. <laughs> You take two points of lethal damage as the pus starts to eat away at your hand as you see this slopping mess of melting fur and exposed tendons in your hand. Cool, cool, cool. Next attack. All right. Next attack. It dodged. Last one. Are you fucking kidding me? And it dodged. <laughs> uh, roll your gnosis as the spirit of your rope comes alive. Awesome. All right, and next is Mark. You've activated your gift. Please roll for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Kyle. My fault. Kyle, it's your turn. Uh, I am also going to activate Fangs of Judgment now, since okay. that's a willpower thing. Okay. And here is my claw. So that is three rollover. You soaked. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's fair. <laughs> But now you need to roll stamina. All right. Diff six. Okay. All right. You take one point of lethal damage as the acid starts to eat away at your hand. As the pus kind of hangs there, gooping off your hand and striking the earth with a hiss. Next is now, Mark, roll your activation roll. Uh, there is no activation roll, actually. Okay. I just spend a gnosis. So. Oh, then you may attack. 
Oh, okay. I will... Uh, well, okay. I'll attack then. Okay. okay. I'll just go for one claw attack then. All right. It dodged. Oof. All right. Now to Zeb. All right. Let's go ahead and roll this uh, beautiful bean footage here. Come on. What kind of a spirit are you summoning? A jaggling or a gaffling? Uh, oh, I see. Jaggling. Jaggling. And I had a willpower there, so actually four okay, successes. Okay, so four successes. I believe that means the spirit arrives and is immediately friendly. All right, excellent. As the spirit um, rises from the earth and it sees what's happening. I will, uh, like, squeeze the claws into my hand and use my blood as the gnosis that I give to it. Okay. Guard me, earth, as I need you now to remain stalwart in your form. The spirit gnaws as it wraps its arms around your legs and it moves with you as it strengthens you for the coming windstorm. All right. And now it is the Bane. So first, it's attack roll. Uh, we'll start with Korra. I soak. Uh, oh, did you not dodge? I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it got two roll over. Fucking hell. As you take three points of aggravated damage as its head rears around and snaps as you feel the the bite happen and then the fleshy like hands grabbing and ripping out chunks of you as the head thrashes you around and throws you as you see one of the faces on the tip, tips of the tongue scream in your face as you're flung backwards and hit the ground hard as the bane like hand shadow like bane like hands from where its pus is hit reach and grab at you, moaning as their hands dissolve away, still not strong enough to form. All of you can do a perception occult if you so choose. Mark so, so chooses. Yeah. So I don't do this often. Um, if you don't have any thoughts in that, then it, are you like automatically fail? Uh, for yeah, an intelligence like thing, it means you increase the difficulty by three or can't do it if it increases it beyond ten. And so the difficulty for, for everyone is six. For you, it is nine. I'm going to pass. Mark got a five. Damn. You notice from the earth, corruption is feeding into it. Mark, Zeb, and Roy. It's draining the earth somehow, and it is feeding it, and its strength is growing, as you do notice that it is regaining the power it's spent almost as quickly as it's using it. And now it's next attack, which is at Zeb, I believe is what I said. You are correct, sir. All right. Did you, no, you didn't dodge, so. I did not dodge, no, sir. No, I did not. It's gonna be a straight up, straight soak action off of uh, this All horror right. show. All right. Woo, <laughs> baby. Oh my God, <laughs> damn. This is how nine. we get scars, friends. Yeah, nine this is how we get scars, friends. <laughs> oh yeah, this might be uh, this might be it. This might have been the uh, might have been a good game session, friends. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> Final uh, Fantasy X music starts playing. It's like, oh man. It's like so the nine, nine, Final nine, Fantasy nine. starts going off here. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure I got this right. So oh, yeah, just uh, stamina. Oh, I actually have. Uh, well, fortunately, I have more stamina than I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. No. Would you like to use your mulligan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's probably a real good idea. All right. Let's, well, let's use the old mulligan. Otherwise, this is going to transition to Wraith the Oblivion pretty quick. All right. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Better. So you took six points of lethal damage as it the tongues wrap around. It bites. It flings. And it tries It tries to pick you up. It has no, um, it has no success as your right leg comes off at the knee. You'll have to spend a turn focusing on regeneration to reattach your leg as it is standing there with the Earth Spirit holding it straight up. All right. That's fucking gnarly. Okay. <laughs> and then the final one, I believe, was for Kyle. Now it gets to roll for summoning a tornado. Um, also, don't forget about the Blight Touch. Ah, uh, yes. So the Blight Touch, it has to spend a point. So for Zeb, your worst personality trait is going to be coming out potentially. Oh, good. So I'm going to roll. So I need you to roll. Uh, 
Yes, you must roll willpower, difficulty six. Okay. If you fail, then your worst personality trait comes out. So you're good. Uh, right. Cora, same to you. Uh, I wonder what her sorry, worst I personality cannot. trait is. <laughs> Holding breath. <gasps> <laughs> No! <laughs> so your worst personality trait is out for the next hour. Oh man, she's gonna be pummeling Roy. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we fixed that. So <laughs> no damn it. No so tornado conscious. comes about. Now, at this moment, Malcolm flings out his hands as you see his arms explode into bloody pulp almost, as you see his muscles exposed as his blood turns into black lightning. Touched with bits of bale fire as it forms a net. Malcolm, roll Wits Rituals difficulty 7 as you have drained your companions of older brother to strengthen this net with their blood, their gnosis, and their willpower. As the net forms and it clasps against it, as you see the energy that is draining from the earth stop as it slams into the ground and is held there as it's screaming and clawing. Held there as it flames wrap around it and hold it as it's held there as it's looking up at you unable to move the flames lick at your own flesh slightly as final days goes how for the rest of the sept we will kill it together i thought everyone would have heard that the horrors others were also in the city oh that makes sense yeah and so a call goes out and the scepter all the whole set returns as everyone activates their greatest gifts and they beat this creature to the ground together as an entire set it takes a while and many walk away with burns and certainly some leave with scars as zeb you have a ring of scar tissue around your leg dude uh, yeah <laughs> you're a freaking oh my god <laughs> cora your hand is now knotted with scar tissue as well, as well as yours, Kyle, from the pus. The corruption is bled into your skin as the scar tissue is gnarled and horrifying to gaze upon if exposed in all forms. Damn. Awesome. Damn. One, one fucking damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, sorry. <laughs> shouldn't have touched it. <laughs> I don't want scars. Too bad. As you hear Regender talking with Fate Dancer, talking to Fate Dancer, going, That was the incarnate of the Sept. We need to reach out, send a spirit to them quickly. Who knows what happened to their path stone? As there's talk all around, as you hear murmurs. Can I get perception alertnesses from everyone, please? Woo, I'm blind. So zip. All right, so. It's a good thing. Malcolm didn't botch that roll. If you botch that roll, everyone everyone in the ritual, or the right master dies, and everyone who performed the ritual has to make a stamina roll or die. Shit. I, damn. Right as I rolled it, I would have given him a willpower. So, Kyle, Cora, and Malcolm, you all hear people in the Sept whispering to each other as there, there's a concern about the Uctena, like... Why was Malcolm able to summon something that had connections to Balefire? Sure, it saved them, but what else does he know? Malcolm's just gonna kind of wander off, try and get as by himself as possible and look at the uh, uh, Moon Bridge entryway and just sit quietly. I'm not really quite sure. Oh, wait, no. My worst character trade's out. I'm angry, <laughs> aren't I? Yeah, you are. Angry and judgmental, and always want your way. Yeah. Yeah. So who's saying these things? Are they people who are above, uh, a rank ab ranked above me at all? Some are. Some are equal rank. Some are below. All right. I'm going to go to someone who isn't higher rank than me. <laughs> you're probably going to go to someone lower more. rank because probably deep down you're a bit of a bully, too. Probably a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> We're going to be honest here, Sam. Yeah, probably a little bit. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> You're probably going up to uh, Amy Wall Street Hunter, who is a 
Glasswalker Ragabosh, who's doing this kind of whispering. She is a foster, and Wildspeaker is also speaking about it. And he's also only a foster, and as he hasn't had much time to gather renown, given his duty as Den Father. Mm. I, I do respect Wildspeaker, though, because he was my Den Father. But you're angry. I'm angry. Oh, you're suck. angry and judgmental, Sam. And judgmental. <laughs> okay. Um. I'm gonna... Are they together? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Fuck. Um, so she'll go up to... Not go up to, but she'll just turn on them and... You'll do right to not speak about your elders that way. You saved our Karen, and you will not talk that way. Keep her mouth shut. You cannot say anything except gratitude. Is they taken aback? Is they kind of growl at you? What? Pass your right cha- challenge. Start thinking you can tell anyone who's part of your pack what to do. Just like a get. You can fuck right off. You saved this, Karen. And you need to show the respect that it deserves. Sure. Cora. Rhea. <laughs> Their glares are cold as you walk away. I was shaking and breathing hard. No one else want to talk fucking shit. <laughs> Just, like, whispering to herself, muttering, freaking bullshit. God damn. What's everyone else do? Yeah. <laughs> Mark is going to suggest that a rite of cleansing is performed. They agree, and all the thurges come together. They allow Mark the honor. And I will begin the rite, then. All right. Can you Same. give us a roll? You get a several bonus dice. Thanks to all the additional participants. Participants. Go get them, Mark. Yeah. Just gotta remember what what spend, I need. Spend one point of Gnosis. Um, actually, you're gonna spend five points of Gnosis get, given the size of this thing. Okay. That's just enough. Yep. All and right. the difficulty due to how tainted this thing was is seven. It is a right of accord, Oof. which means that you must roll... Charisma ritual. Charisma rich rituals. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay. Woo. As you succeed, as you see the taint kind of boil away, the pus leaving, and you see the ethereal hands break away and shrieks. Final day speaks up. We are in agreement. We will be sending Fomori's Bane and the Infernal Alphas to the Sept of the Frozen Hills. From there, they will make their way to the Sept of the Winterfang. Frozen Hills is the closest one. The rest of the way, you'll have to make it on foot. We need this investigated. I have already sent word to the Sept of the Five Mirrors. We will be looking for another mutual Sept so that we can speak on peaceful terms. You all leave tomorrow. We shall prepare then. <clears throat> Bring back word what the hell happened. We'll figure it out. I trust you will. And we will find out what they find out next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We will catch you in our next episode. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye.